Aaron Fernando from the University of Western Australia. Uh, he's going to talk about functional observability and the design of minimum order functional observers. Um, Tyrone received his undergraduate degree in electrical engineering with honors and PhD degree in the same area from the University of Melbourne in 1990 and 1996, respectively. After receiving his PhD degree, he joined the School of uh, Electrical, Electronic and Computer Engineering at the University of Western Australia, where he is currently an associate professor and also the deputy head of school. Um, in his school, uh, he, ha he has been the chair of the teaching and learning committee for three consecutive years. And he has also been the recipient of a student unit reflective feedback award uh, for the teaching in the area of signals and systems. Uh, his research interests are in control theory and its applications to biomedical engineering. Um, he has served as an associate editor of the RCP Transactions on Information Technology and Biomedicine and is a senior member of the RCP. Thanks, Indra. Um, I'd first like to uh, thank uh, Professor Brian Anderson uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to uh, give this presentation to uh, this audience. Um, I want to talk about uh, functional observability a concept uh, that we introduced and how we uh, use that concept uh, to solve uh, uh, an open problem uh, in control. Uh, I'm referring to the uh, problem of uh, uh, designing minimum order uh, functional observers. Uh, the presentation is uh, based on a paper that will appear uh, shortly in IEEE uh, transactions in automatic control, and uh, it's authored by myself, uh, uh, Hugh Tring from Deakin University, and Les Jennings uh, uh, from the School of Mathematics in uh, UWA. Uh, what I uh, like to achieve by the end of this talk uh, is hopefully to convince the audience that uh, observability is better expressed as a triple uh, and not as a pair as we read in control engineering textbooks. So uh, I think the detailed arguments are there in this paper. Uh, what I'll try to do is to outline uh, those arguments in this presentation. I, I think we are aware that, uh, well, Bloomingberger is, is, the, is the father of the observers, he introduced the concept of observability in 1966 and also showed how to design uh, state observers. And uh, observability, the concept of observability, I, I, I'd like to call that state observability because that's what it is really. Um, and in his pioneering work, he also uh, introduced the concept of uh, functional observers. I will look at what functional observers are. But I, I, I did a search on the internet, and I was pleasantly surprised that uh, Louis Berger is still attached to Stanford University uh, in one of the engineering departments. So uh, what are functional observers? Uh, functional observers uh, estimate a linear function of the state vector without estimating all the states. State observer, of course, estimate all the states. Uh, functional observer will estimate only a linear function of the state vector. Now, observability uh, was assumed as a precondition for designing functional observers. In all of the algorithms proposed in literature that I've read so far, uh, assumes uh, observability. But uh, I will show observability is not a precondition to design functional observers. There are conditions where the system is not observable, but still it is possible to design functional observers. Uh, and in this talk, all sides uh, show that functional observability is, is a broader concept, and that concept captures the idea of observability. So uh, state observability or observability is only a special case of functional observability. So that is an idea that will come out in the talk. So uh, what is the, uh, the problem that uh, 
remained unsolved, well, we would be referring to a system, the standard system defined by matrices A, B, and C. And uh, ZT is the function that we want to estimate. And that can be defined uh, by a matrix L. So Z is L XT. So obviously this matrix L has n columns. And it will have r rows. So r being a number less than n. So we're not interested in estimating all the states. Obviously, if you choose L to be I, the identity matrix, then uh, we are talking about a state observer design, if L is equal to I. And the, uh, the functional observer is a dynamical system, uh, which is uh, defined in this way uh, by matrices N, J, H, and B. Those are the observed matrices. And Z hat T is, is the estimate of Z T. So the objective is to find these matrices N, J, H, and E, so that Z hat will track Z. And, and, and the problem that remain unsolved is the design of the minimum order problem. In other words, what is the smallest N that we can have? N is a square matrix. What is the smallest N we can have so that Z hat tracks Z. So uh, who are the people who looked at this problem uh, starting from Lewinberger in 1966? Uh, we see a lot of familiar names here. Brian himself, a jury, a John Moore, uh, Mohammed al uh, from University of Melbourne. And uh, of course, a, a very important result was reported by Daruch in 2000. And our work is actually based on the work of Daruch in 2000.